Hello everyone and welcome to ProRPA.com. In our last week blog post and in the demo as well, we touched a little bit on the loops, um, specifically within the flowchart itself. And this week we'll be delving more into the looping concept. This time, um, instead of you know the limitation of uh, just using the loops within the flowchart, we'll be using uh, loops in a sequence diagram. And uh, we have specific activities for it. Um, theoretical explanation for the same has been provided in the blog post as well. But uh, in this video, we'll be going through a demo. All right, so um, the first and foremost um, in uh, uh, the looping is uh, we have used a while loop, right? And um, uh, for, from an example standpoint, um, I'm gonna use a while loop to check whether a number is prime or not, right? So um, I have the program ready and uh, there's an algorithm for which we're gonna make a few changes and everything, but uh, check this out. Um, so for a number to be prime, that number should be divisible only by one and the number itself, right? If it is divisible by any other numbers, then um, the number is not a prime. So um, the algorithm to check whether a number is prime or not goes something like this. We first input number, uh, which is gonna be a variable num from the user. We're gonna initialize an integer variable, uh, which we'll be calling as divisor, and it's gonna have a default value of two. Then we'll start and continue the loop until the divisor, this divisor, is less than the number that we have entered from the user. And um, if the number mod divisor is not equal to zero, that means when we divide number with divisor, and uh, if the remainder of the same is not equal to zero, then we're gonna iterate the divisor and we're gonna continue with this, this approach in the loop. Else, we're gonna print that the number is not prime. If it is, not, if it is divisible by any other number, we can say right away that you know the number is not prime and we can exit. And we're gonna end the loop. And um, if you know every time the loop is in these conditions itself, right? Then uh, we can say that the number is prime, right? If it didn't exit and everything, um, then uh, of course the number is gonna be prime because it was not divisible by any of the numbers used in the loop, right? Um, hope that made sense. Um, it's a fairly easy program. However. Uh, to implement this, we are gonna use, uh, we are gonna make a few changes in this algorithm, just an FYI. Okay, so um, there are gonna be a few new things that we'll be learning, but let's start off with the program. So we have a diagram called prime check to check whether the number is prime or not. And uh, we're gonna enter the number from the user. Um, the title of the window is gonna be this, and um, we have a label to enter the variable as well. Here's the condition. You know, if the divisor is less than number, divisor is uh, a variable of integer type, which has a default value of two, and uh, we just used it here to check if the number it is lesser than the number, then continue with the loop, right? And uh, we're checking uh, for the prime condition using an if statement. And in here, we're gonna use a function called mod. So, um, as, as I said, mod function is used to find um, the remainder of uh, between, um, like once a numerator is divided by the denominator. So numerator in this case is gonna be the number and uh, the denominator is gonna be the divisor variable with the default value of two and we're gonna iterate it in our subsequent steps. And um, this, this greater than, less than sign, uh, together they constitute the not equal to operator. So we are saying that the number mod divisor is not equal to zero, then just continue with the loop, right? So we're incrementing the divisor and we're gonna continue with the loop. And if uh, the number is not a prime sequence, what we have done is, um, because there's no way for us to exit, let's say, you know, you try to uh, look for an activity exit, but there's nothing, nothing of that sort and you don't know how to implement that, then, what we have done is we have taken another variable, a flag variable that is gonna denote whether number is prime or not. So we used the prime uh, flag variable probably in the beginning of uh, our program itself. 
and uh, it's gonna have a default value of zero. So how about this? Let's change the uh, overall algorithm itself. Initialize flag variable with default value zero, right? And any time the number becomes divisible by uh, the divisor in hand, then um, instead of printing this right away, what we can do is, because we don't know how to exit and everything, we are gonna uh, mark flag variable as one, right? And um, this way, you can change the numbering, of course. Um, and once the loop is ended, you can simply check uh, if um, the flag variable is equal to zero, then, uh, you know, simply print that uh, number is prime. That means every time um, this condition was held true. And else, you can simply say because else it's going to be one only, right? That's the only... Uh, condition that we have used number is not prime and there it is hope that made sense right um, we are just using a flag variable so that you know it becomes easier for us to maintain a track whether the number has been prime or not and guess what there's something wrong here as well if say uh, the number is divisible by, um, let, let's say uh, we have used a number called six, right? Once we went to, with the default value two, it went to this, uh, this else condition because the remainder of uh, this division function um, is not equal to zero, right? Is actually equal to zero. Six divided by two is zero, right? In terms of the remainder. Then uh, it went here and it again went to the loop, but it never incremented the value of this divisor, right? So we are sort of stuck in um, the forever in an infinite loop. Now to make to, to make some changes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increment the value of divisor by one. So that's what we have done. If the prime, uh, if the sequence is not prime, still just mark the prime, uh, the flag value as one, and also increment the divisor. Right. That way, um, you'll always make sure that your number, or or what you can do is you can always do it uh, right after somewhere around here. You know, every time this this divisor needs to be incremented. Okay. Uh, hope that made sense. Um, and. Uh, once we have checked for this condition, we're going to check the output and we're going to say if the prime flag is equal to one, then that means uh, the number is not prime, else it is prime. Uh, that's the message box that it's going to print. Right, so input the number from the user, check the condition, mark the flag accordingly, incremented the divisor and displayed the output. Fairly simple process, right? We have used uh, the while loop in here and because uh, in while loop we have the condition before the actual sequence of steps within the body section that needs to be followed, um, this seems logically correct as well. And uh, let's try to run this. Let me just minimize this and run. And let's try to enter a prime number first, seven. It says the number is prime, works perfect. Let's try with the number, let's say six, right? Uh, okay, or maybe try eight. The number is not prime. Same thing because it is divisible by two and four both. All right, uh, hope that made sense. Um, we just did a very simple program, although it did require quite a few sequence of steps. And um, as always, please use um, uh, a good, you know, um, title of all the sequences or e all the activities that you're going to use so that it becomes comprehensible. One of the most effective ways to make your program uh, effective and easy.
to understand. And um, uh, in the same case, we could have used do while loop as well. And uh, I have discussed this um, in uh, greater detail in the blog post that you know in do while, we have to write the body section before the actual condition to make sure that at least once the sequence of activities is executed by the program. All right, um, hope that made sense. And uh, let's go to our next demo, which is gonna be for, um, to read some data from, uh, yeah, just save this, to read some data from an Excel spreadsheet. So this Excel spreadsheet um, is gonna have some names of the employees. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow a sequence, which is, uh, which is somewhat like this, that you know, we'll go to the directory where the spreadsheet with the employee names would exist. We're gonna read all the data from that relevant worksheet. We're gonna save that data from that spreadsheet into a variable called data table. I mean, the type of data table. And the name is gonna be names underscore DT1. And then for each row in that data table, this is the for loop where what we're gonna start off with. We're gonna get the, um, value of that particular row item and we're going to print that uh, print that item which is going to be the name of the employees of course okay that's a um, you know um, of course it might make sense it might not that you know how do i create an algorithm that's one of the uh, major issues people deal with but um, the best way to make an effective algorithm is through practice so i would ask you to try you know create your own problems and solve them using uh, using the activities that are given within the UI path. And I'm sure one way or the other, you'll be able to, you know, um, to find some of the other way to, 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 to s implement the solution that you intend to. Okay, so um, in this program, um, let me open the Excel file that we're gonna use in here. It's on the desktop, it's on my desktop itself, employees.xlsx. Okay, so uh, we have about 20 names in here, right? Starting off with Jackson, then Aiden, Lucas, and all the way to Lily. And uh, what we're gonna do is, um, we started off with an Excel scope, which is gonna be right here, Excel application scope. And in there, we provided the directory where we want the, where we have the data that needs to be read, or some, in, in many cases, written as well like the spreadsheet which we'll be dealing with in our program. So it's available in this particular directory and I have the file name as well within the location. And then in the sequence of activities, first I'm gonna read all the data. And uh, just so you know, we have the uh, worksheet name as employee names, right? So it's gonna read all the data from the employee names worksheet and what it's gonna do is in the output console, we're just gonna print the message that, you know, now once we have read all the data, I'm gonna say these are the employee names. So I'm just printing a message here saying that employee names are, employees name are or something. And then I started off with a for each uh, loop. So once you get the for each row, um, you automatically get a new variable to help you iterate through the data table. So um, in, uh, when I was reading all the data from the spreadsheet, I, I used the headers because my data in the spreadsheet has headers as well. So first row would be considered as the header itself. And I'm storing the output of data table in names underscore DT1 variable, which is there as well. Okay, and um, that's the same name that I uh, gave in my algorithm as well. Now uh, in the for each row, um, using the loop, we are gonna get, first we're gonna get each and every row from the spreadsheet, which is, I'll show you the properties here. You know, the column index is gonna be zero because that's the first column. Indexing always starts with zero. So that's the first column uh, that we are dealing with right now. And um, everything is in the first, uh, you know, column itself. So that's why I have provided the column index as zero and uh, the row item we are getting through this loop condition that we have used before. And um, once we, when we try to um, read the data from this row, that data would be read and stored in another variable called name. 
name is a string variable which I created and um, you can put your its scope depending on uh, you know your program where you're gonna use it further this variable and uh, you're simply printing the uh, that that particular string variable on the output console fairly easy we're just reading the Excel data and we are gonna print it on the output console right using these functions so uh, I mean um, the basic reason for me to walk through this whole thing was that you know I wanted to make sure that you understand a few more activities beyond the scope of what is written in uh, in uh, our blog post in the theoretical explanation and you know um, these this way you get a feel of how a project within the UI path can work and what all different activities can be used and and there are like literally hundreds and thousands of activities that even probably I haven't used yet and uh, there's always like a you know learning curve involved and um, the the opportunity for you to explore more within the tool right so um, hope that made sense uh, it's a very um, easy program again that you know we are simply getting the data from an Excel sheet reading each and every um, row line by line and we're gonna print it on the output console okay so let's run this program I'm gonna close this file because it will automatically be opened and read and closed and everything by the program or the bot itself it's actually pretty pretty decent bot because we in my first um, example itself in the first blog post itself I was actually reading data from the Excel it's one of the most sophisticated features that we're gonna use even in even in high-end bots so um, let's run this it is doing everything automatically it read the file and closed all is done let's check the output console there it is employee names which I just ran at this time itself it shows in the output console the employees names are and all the names are written all the 20 people names right I could have put it anywhere I could have used a message box I could have actually um, used the Excel um, write functionality or something to re to write the data into the Excel itself or or there are like other functions that you could have done probably use two different uh, MS applications or any other sophisticated ERP systems or anything to write that data so uh, as you see for each is one of the most important um, activities to iterate through a data table and um, many a times retrieve data uh, line by line and use them in any other tools based on uh, the program activities that we have used in uh, in the program itself of course and um, that is pretty much it for this week I hope it made sense everybody uh, please do provide your comments, feedback, and uh, your likes and shares. And um, UiPath in itself is, uh, you know, um, is, is I'm, I'm sure you must have got the feel that, you know, uh, there's a lot more that can be done. In our, um, in our next, uh, you know, tutorial, we'll be delving more into some activities, and uh, we are actually heading pretty fast in terms of making the actual bots and um, that is pretty much it all right thank you very much and happy automating bye bye